All right, guys, we are going to talk about the difference between a regular butterfly pull-up and a chest bar butterfly pull-up. There is a big difference, and a lot of it has to do with your approach with the ascent and when the rep should count, okay? So we're gonna start with the regular pull-up, the butterfly pull-up, where the chin just goes over the bar, okay? Now, we're bypassing all the stuff that happens during the ascent, but to point out that the top the highest point of the, the ascent is actually where the rep counts on a butterfly pull-up. Notice the chin is back behind the bar, and that gives you space to move underneath the bar as you descend, okay? So this is what the top of a butterfly pull-up should look like. Your chin is higher than the bar, your back, your arms are at about 90 degree angle, and your body is still uh, reclined backward. Okay, the recline backward part is really important because it helps counterbalance you as you drop beneath the bar and set you up for another rep that does not swing forward and backward as we covered in a different video. Okay, so as you reach the top, rep counts. As you start dropping, you start pulling your legs back. The body stays relatively straight, the knees draw back first, and then as you get to the loading position, you're already in that arched kipping position, ready for the next rep. Some of your body weight is on the front side of the bar, some of your body weight is on the back side of the bar, and then you'll cycle through this, okay? Main thing to point out is that the highest point is where the rep counts. Now, for you guys that have trouble with the butterfly chest bar, this could be the reason why. When you are doing a kipping chest bar, you typically go up bump the bar and come back down. So that means that the highest point of the rep is the rep, right? So this is where it differs. If you are doing a butterfly chest bar, the highest point is actually not touching the bar. Now, this is a little bit exaggerated. You don't need to be that high back behind the bar, but being up and behind the bar where your chest is about, about the same height as the bar, that is the highest point rep doesn't count yet, as you start dropping, that's when you pull your feet through and you bring the bar to you. This will help you uh, kind of graze the bar and as you make contact with the bar, that's when the rep counts, but it's on your way down. Super, super important to remember. Then as you drop, you go into the same loading position as you would for the butterfly pull-up, okay? So biggest takeaways from this, number one, you have to be higher, okay? It is a chest of bar. So if you guys are learning your butterfly chest of bar, you want to make sure that the feet end up as high as, this is kind of confusing. If you're hanging from the bar and you draw a line from your belly button forward, that is the highest point that your feet should reach as you are in this position, okay? It doesn't mean that your feet are gonna swing higher than your hips. The, the nature of a uh, kipping or butterfly chest bar is that when you swing your feet, we'll just say butterfly chest bar, when you swing your feet up, you actually get enough momentum through your legs that your hips start extending while your feet are still rising. So your hips actually stay higher than your feet. And once you reach the top, this at a long hang, say like this position, the belly button here would be where the feet ended up, up there, okay? on the uh, butterfly pull-up, your feet only reach the height of your hip. So there's about this much of a height difference in your feet uh, between the butterfly pull-up and the butterfly chest to bar. Again, super, super important to remember that. If your feet do not go high enough on this part, you will not be at this reclined angle at the top. If your feet are low, as you pull your chest toward the bar, your feet are actually gonna drop because it's you can't, continue to raise your feet as you're pulling closer to the bar. Same thing here though. So that angle is super important to hit. That's what balances you out. And if your body is vertical, you can't really pull your legs back behind the bar more because they're already kind of beneath the bar. So it's having the feet forward in this reclined angle, highest point away from the bar. And then as you descend to pull the bar toward you and brush your chest. Okay, aside from that, the biggest difference, grip width. If your hands really narrow, like they would be for a strict pull-up or a butterfly pull-up, then 
getting the bar to make contact with your chest here, it's pretty restricting. So widening the grip about one hand's width. So if my hands are like this on a butterfly pull up, I just wanna move my hand to the outside there and to the outside there. So now my hands are here and that will keep my elbows from having to bend quite so much and I can still pull the bar to me. It leaves me more room to puff my chest out to make contact with the bar. Remember not to bang into the bar because it is a circle. Uh, it's an oval, right, leaning back. But I call it a capital D when people come up and bang the bar and drop. So we want to avoid that. Just make sure that you're brushing through. If you put chalk on the bar in between your hands, when your chest comes through and you make contact with the bar, it should have like this chalky brush stroke, essentially, from here up, okay? So um, just to clarify one of the rules, a chest bar could even be here if you needed it to be. That, that might be a little extreme, but anything below the collar, uh, your collarbone, clavicles, is where you need to make contact with the bar. Okay, if you have any more questions, please drop them beneath in the comments section, and I will see if I can answer all of your questions. Thank you again for watching, and here it is.